Hi, this is Marsha Mason. I'm an artist with Rancho Cordova Arts. This is the fourth video about painting leaves and foliage in watercolor. The first video dealt with how to mix your, pair, your own pairs of blues and yellows to make greens. The second one was about using pre-mixed convenience greens as a base for variety in your greens. And the third one was about mixing paints for oranges and purples of leaves. Well, greens are powerful. What we're going for is that all the colors in a painting say the same thing. Are they all saying cloudy day? Are they saying sunrise? If your foliage is not consistent with the light that you're expressing in the rest of your painting, the greens can be jarring and overwhelm it. Here's a good example. I'm hoping that this fourth video gives you the tools to put it all together to figure out the perfect greens to use in your paintings by making them work within your painting's context and the plants that you're painting. Today we're going to talk about natural light that illuminates leaves and everything else in your painting because the color of surfaces depends on the light source used to illuminate them. We have two light sources changing the colors of leaves and other objects as the sun moves from sunrise to noon to sunset. They are sunlight and skylight. These sources these light sources show daily changes in light intensity, that's brightness, and light temperature, that's warm or cool color. Through the day, direct sunlight changes from a rosy dawn to intensely bright greenish-white at noon to scarlet at sunset. When sunlight and skylight are combined, it can range from pale yellow at dawn to cerulean or green blue at noon, to a deep yellow at sunset. But keep in mind there are lots of atmospheric conditions that can affect sunlight and skylight, like clouds, dust, smoke, and humidity. I was curious, so I set up my camera on a tripod and shot one photograph every hour to watch leaf colors change through the day. Let's take a look at that. So here's the slideshow. The day started out overcast, then cleared up later in the morning. This planting is in a sheltered spot on the north side of the building, so it'll be in shade for part of the time, and it won't get direct sunlight in late afternoon and at sunset. So notice how the day starts out with no direct sunlight. The greens are pretty blue, and there's less contrast between the leaves and the shadow. As morning moves to noon, we get brighter sunshine, lighter leaves, where the sun's hitting them, and the greens become more yellow and more saturated. The plants have more contrast. Now this is actually noon because this was taken at uh, Pacific uh, Daylight Time. So this is our standard time, noon. We have brighter sunshine, lighter leaves, greens are more yellow, more saturated. Now we're moving from noon to sunset. Our brightness is decreasing, things are in shade now, they're just getting the reflected light from the sky. The color saturation is decreasing, and the greens are starting to shift back toward blue. And this is the last one I took at 8 p.m. Now I'd like to compare that uh, dusk, the last one of the day picture with the morning picture. There we go, 7 a.m. I'm going to put that back so you can see. It's pretty similar. This has a little more light intensity on it. And now let's compare that bluish, uh, desaturated greens with 
the yellowy greens of midday. So there you have it. Let's grab our paints so we can play with the color of our leaf surfaces depending on the light that's shining on them. Now don't get confused. We've been talking about the color of light and leaves, but we're going to translate that with pigments, which is a whole different thing. Uh, green we'll use as a base, and you can mix your own or use a pre-mixed convenience green. I'm using a Holbein Sap Green, which has three colors in it. They are a Pigment Green 7, Thalo Green, they are a quinacridone magenta, uh, which is pigment red, one, what is it, 122, or, and a, um, a transparent yellow, uh, a nickel azo yellow, which is great for botanicals, and it is pigment uh, yellow, 150. So that's my mix of green. You can make them with, uh, with, yellow and blue too. Uh, we're going to also need a yellow to shift the greens warmer and we're going to need a blue to shift the greens cooler. I'm using the same yellow that I have in my convenience green. I'm adding a Windsor blue or phthalo blue to add for my cooler color. And then you need a mixing complement to the green base to make the color duller. Now, you can't rely on a paint that is a visual complement to work as a mixing complement because visual complements are deceptive. This is all about pigments you're using. So look it up on handprint.com. They have a great list. But use what you have, make some mixtures, and see the results for yourself. So uh, I've got my convenience green, my color to warm it up, my color to cool it down, and I have my color to dull it. Now, uh, I found out uh, what works because I experimented. I made some color charts with this particular convenience green. I added different colors and I saw what they did. And that's how I know. So let's take that base color, which is the convenience green, the sap green, and we'll just add a little bit right here. Now, this is why I'm doing this new color on uh, beside the color that's already dried, because I want to show you that Greens are additionally tricky because you're going to have color changes as things dry. Sometimes it's a little duller, sometimes it shifts color a little bit. But that's one of the tricky parts. You just have to take your time, do your tests, and uh, pay attention to what's going on. Make notes if you need to. It all helps in the end. Uh, so let's say it's breakfast time. You've seen the video, the uh, slides I took. Uh, those colors were desaturated, they were duller, and they were cooler, they were bluer. So to the base, I added some blue, and I added some dioxazine purple to desaturate, and we got our this is going to turn out a little bit different. It's okay. There we go. Okay. And because I have a little bit different um, uh, amounts of the ingredients in this, we're going to get a little different green, but it's the variety in the greens that make things interesting and actually help to describe what's in there, in your foliage. At lunchtime, we get more intensity. We know that turns things yellow and lighter. So I added some yellow. You see how brown that is in mass tone? That means straight out of the tube. I'll just show you right here. It's quite brown, but when you thin it with water, you get these lovely, lovely yellows. So I added some to our base, and this is what we got. We got 
Oops, let's add a little bit of that. There we go. We got a lighter color because yellow pigments are some of the, well, they are the lightest ones on the, um, on the color wheel. So there we go. Now, at dinner time, we have even more de uh, dullness, I thought, from the photographs than at breakfast. So I added a little bit more purple, a little bit more violet to this mixture, and you can see the difference here. It's darker because our violet is very dark, so we've um, made it a darker value, and it's duller. You can almost see some brownish in here from the combination. Now, this is what we're dealing with. As the intensity of light on or through the leaves increases, the apparent color of the leaves shifts toward yellow. So here we're talking about lunch. So when you add yellow, your, life be your leaf becomes a lighter value. Um, we know that because the pigments are the lighter value pigments. You can also dilute your paint more to get an even lighter value. But what happens here is that blues become blue-greens. Greens become yellow-greens. Reds become orange and oranges become yellow. Everything shifting toward yellow as the light intensity increases. Now, violets here opposite of the yellow shift either toward red or blue depending on the hue balance. So, here's what it looks like at lunchtime. It's all gone to yellow. And now, we've gone through morning, noon, and uh, dusk, and here's an interesting thing. We showed how as light intensity increases, the colors move toward yellow, but in the shadows, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, things are moving away from that opposite on the colored wheel. So we have yellow going to red and we have yellow green going toward blue. So the leaves in the shadow carry the color of the leaves and the indirect illumination from the blue sky. They're darker because they're less light. There's less light on them. So I achieved this by putting a foundation tint of different, a couple different blues and a violet. I used my muting color, my duller color, the uh, Diox uh, Violet under this one because at lunchtime, I think the shadows are sharper, so I use my darkest color here. I use the uh, phthalo blue, my cooling color, under the breakfast one, and I used an ultramarine blue, which actually makes it a little duller uh, and cooler under the dinnertime uh, piece, because I thought in the, sl uh, the uh, slides that the uh, colors were a little less saturated at the at 8 p.m. Now I you can uh, I encourage you to observe how light plays on foliage at different times of day in different weather different places and to stay curious and stay creative check out my other leaf green videos for more information about mixing pigments I'll be talking about making color charts in another video we encourage you to post a photo of your paintings on Rancho Cordova Arts Facebook page. Rancho Cordova Arts and I thank you for watching. I'll be back with more videos, so stay tuned.